I am a very lucky person because I'm fulfilled by my work and I think that's such a gift. Painting for me is um, a translation of my experiences in the world and I feel very fortunate to have something that allows me to express how I get through my day, how I map out my life, how I travel. This is one of my largest pieces. It's eight feet tall and it's definitely the largest drawing I ever did except it has a companion piece that's the same size and dimensions and they're both taken from the old World Trade Center so this is this piece is 1998 so it's quite old it's hanging in my studio and I'm kind of just because I feel very inspired about charcoal drawing right now I just had a show that opened um, of new charcoal drawings I was kind of enticed to come back to my old work and revisit it and I really love this piece it's actually I think this is one of my favorite pieces I've ever done I feel that it's inspired by definitely by the old world trade center and the glass and everything and also by African art and African weavings and African sculpture and carvings and um, it's very graphic it totally relates to what I saw in the World Trade Center, the reflections in the distorted glass. And um, definitely the scale of it embodies my experience of being there, which was so overwhelming and beyond my peripheral vision and really vast. This is a painting I did out a window down on the Lower East Side in St. Mark's Place looking out a back window of a friend's apartment and it's one of several paintings that I did from the same view and then I also did a lot of them from my own apartment view. I've always been interested in the connection between architecture and nature so that's to me that's what this embodies. There are windows, there are fire escapes, there are gate, um, fire escape gates, and it's kind of like an urban jungle because crisscrossing over all of those geometrical architectural shapes are these extravagant tree branches and they're kind of overtaking the architecture and of course one of the other things I really love about night painting is that details like up here you know the window Probably I was looking at inside at somebody's actual window, like maybe there was a shape that I could see inside, but it becomes more abstracted because it's night. And so there's a, like a mystery of what is in that rectangle and how does it relate to this one and this one and even a little hint of who's behind that window. I made a 18 foot by 12 foot 49 panel multiple painting for the Condé Nast building in 2009 I finished it. It was for an exhibition and the wall itself where it hung was 40 feet tall. So it was definitely the most ambitious and the largest of those of that series of works that I did, all inspired by different window facades of skyscrapers in New York and all painted on plein air, which means painted on the street. So I painted each canvas of the 49 canvases one at a time at street level, looking up at the facades roughly at the same time of day each time and based on drawings that I prepared beforehand. So it was uh, very impressive uh, to me when I finally saw the piece on the wall for the first time whole and complete.
do like having the distance between my home and my studio. It gives me mental clarity to travel there. It's a highly impractical arrangement, which is part of my persona, I suppose, as an artist, is that I'm not that practical. I try to be, but, you know, within wildly fluctuating boundaries, depending on my schedule. For example, I could go to the studio for two hours, or I could go to the studio for half an hour, or I could go to the studio for nine hours. My studio is really far from my apartment. It's, it's a really long commute. It takes two subways, at least, and a long walk all the way from the Upper upper West Side to Sunset Park in South Brooklyn. But I love getting there. It's actually really worth the trip. And um, my studio's on the East River in, in South Brooklyn, so there's beautiful light, beautiful air, open spaces, and that helps my work, I think. I think it feeds my work. And the subway ride doesn't have to be boring if the person is, you know, resourceful. So I try to, I try to bring reading material. I also try to bring my sketchbook, and I love drawing people in the subway. I don't really think of portraits or drawing people as my kind of primary work or my serious work, but that's why I like doing it because it's kind of a sideline. It's very. Uh, you know, very spontaneous, very quick, and it definitely makes the trip go faster. Um, I guess my biggest issue is just finding the time. You know, once you commute out there and back again, that takes a big chunk of my day, so I like to have plenty of time when I get there, which I don't always have. So I try to tell myself when I get there, okay, so you only have half an hour or 45 minutes or couple of hours. It'd be nice to have the whole day, but since you'd only have the small amount of time, try to make the most of it. And I think that's, that sometimes works to my advantage as an artist because forcing myself to do a lot in a short amount of time makes me more productive, more focused. So I think it's, it's not so bad. I've talked myself into the idea that I actually think commuting is good for my work because means I'm not being distracted by anything else. Painting on the road is a journey. It's, it's um, inconvenient. It's much easier to paint in your studio. It's quite annoying, but sometimes you have to do it because that's the only way to get the vantage point that is necessary for the work. And uh, personally, I like it because I like reacting to my environment. I like I don't like the just the white walls of my studio. So I really like in, uh, reacting to my environment. Reflections are uh, take something solid and mesh it with its surroundings, so it's you know, form instead of being just separate from its environment. When it's reflected, it's one with its environment, whether that's water or glass. It's all of a piece, so it's a connection, kind of almost like a 
instant painting, taking something three-dimensional and um, making it flat, like a two-dimensional surface. That's one, one reason. I also like it because I feel that I see things in reflections that other people might see too, but they don't pay any attention to them because they're more concrete, more you know, reality-based, and it's a form of abstracting from reality, which I really get a lot of inspiration and creative sustenance from. Painting is more solitary, and I, I'm an extremely social person. I love being around people. I love getting energy and inspiration from my friends, and fellow artists, but I also need to have that time to reflect and kind of process and synthesize things. So for me, actually, a studio setting by myself is better than a... I think I would, my creativity would suffer if I were just displaying it all in a group, like, you know, play. So what's good about my studio in Brooklyn is that it's right on the water, speaking of water. It's right on the East River. The light there is stupendous. My particular location, my particular Chishama, Chishama is the nonprofit organization that hosts me there. The particular studio that they've given me is right on the windows that look right out onto the sunset and right onto the East River. It's really striking and the air is pretty good. I mean, as good as Brooklyn air can be, you know, given the fact that it's kind of polluted, but still, you know, it's it's river air, so it's better than some. I enjoy, and I also like the scale of the Brooklyn Army Terminal where I am, you know, all the big spaces and um, the openness of the terminal and the surrounding grounds. There are these arches that are very classical, big wide plazas and tremendous atrium with high windows. I mean, it's it's really a gorgeous architecture, actually. I would like to quote someone who came to my open studio yesterday. She said, what do you call what you do? She was talking about my composite paintings where I have multiple panels that all connect. Each painting is, is its own entity, but then all connected, they add up to a sum greater than the parts. And she said, what do you call this? She said, because you're doing something that no one else is doing. That was a tremendous compliment. You know, every artist wants to have an original vision. And um, I think a lot of things that people do are, are not that way, even if they want them to be. And I do think, at this moment, of course, it only takes someone else to come along and do the same thing to make this not true anymore. But at this moment, I feel that what I do with architecture and windows and reflection and painting surfaces, I feel that it is unique. And I feel that it's, you know, I just realized recently being ambitious is really, really important. I have been very ambitious, like I made an 18 foot high piece and I was terrified to make such a huge piece and when it went up, when that painting went up on the, the wall of the Condé Nast building, I was really afraid that it was going to fail, like I was going to see it and think, oh, I didn't rise to the occasion, but I think the very nature of ambition, if you can see your vision through, takes you to a new level creatively. Like just the act of trying something that's beyond your comfort zone, I think is really, really important. For me, one of one of the coolest places I ever made a painting was uh, in a hotel on the Indian Ocean. And it, it, the hotel had a view of a skyscraper. And so the skyscraper was reflecting the ocean. So it was a beautiful moment because it was the water and its reflections reflected in a skyscraper, so it was water and glass at the same time. I think that was probably my best view. There's always going to be someone who's going to make it their business to one-up you or, you know, compete with you. And the best thing to do is keep your own focus and believe in yourself. And um, that's it's, it's a form of self-nurturing that when you make your art and then you see what you've done, it carries you to the next time. I've never painted the moon, but I'm looking at it right now and I'd probably, I probably would use charcoal, actually. I'd probably draw the moon with 
charcoal and erasure. And then I'd make the brightest white of the moon the white of the paper, and then everything else around it would get smokier and smokier. And then eventually it would disappear into the blackness of the charcoal. I have an apartment that has a lot of small rooms, so it was uh, a good idea about 15 years ago <laughs> to build a storage rack in a room. And so I have many, many years worth of paintings stacked in that room, trying to keep them safe and protected. It's kind of like an archive that should be better archived, but that's where I stack my work, that's where I pull it out from time to time, that's where I try to make sure it's not damaged, and if it is, find a safer place for it. It's an honor to have the, uh, the work be able to be preserved, because I know, for example, I live on the fifth floor, and if I lived in the basement or something like that, it could be damaged more easily. So from the New York point of view, having that amount of storage space is actually a luxury, and um, I'm grateful to have it. So I've been doing this series of black and white escalator drawings, interior reflections that are very complicated. They have a lot to do with perspective, so people say, oh, you're influenced by, or your work reminds me of Piranese or M.C. Escher. But uh, in any case, I did black and white for, I don't know, a long time, three or four years of black and white escalators. And I finally decided to branch out and do color as well. It was a, actually took a little bit of, um, you know, like a leap of faith to embark on a color drawing because the black and white ones were kind of successful. They looked really good, and it was hard to imagine them in full, full color. So in order to get my feet wet, so to speak, in order to um, make myself trust that the next step would, would be a like a relevant connection to the past work. Instead of making it a painting, like an oil on canvas, I made it a work on paper. It's really fun to be in a group show, although uh, sometimes at, at a group show when I'm in it, I don't meet the other artists because I'm so busy talking to my own friends and people that I've invited. Therefore, I don't feel um, like I have the time to mingle with everyone else in the room that I don't know. But it's very exciting. I mean, it's kind of what artists live for, to spend all that time alone in your studio, all that time working hard and focusing and being private, and then then you get to celebrate. And, and actually, there's a bottle here. Oh, okay. through 
life. Oh, right. Which at first it was annoying. I was like, how can I get rid of that brown? And then I put the compressed charcoal next to it, which was a steely bluish. So we've got sort of like the warm browns and then the cooler grays and then gesso mm -hmm. and then graphite and then pastel. So it's really a lot of oh, it's beautiful. And mm -hmm. uh, pencil marks. Yeah, there's, I think what that is, honestly, I think that might be hard charcoal. Pamela just spoke of her process, but I am enjoying these passages from realistic rendering to very loose, painterly, uh, almost abstract passages. The and the perspective speaks to realism. If some again, some things are, are rendered loosely. In and those two things complement each other. I think this painting is telling, this, is telling me that you are in a dimension that you think you're in, and yet you're in another dimension as well. Because if you look at it in a way with the light and the designs around this so-called um, escalating. It's not really what you think it is because everything outside of it is another is in another realm. I love looking at this work because it reminds me of a carnival. I feel or a carousel. I feel like the lights are blinking and I feel the stairway moving and the softness of the, the parts on the edges just give me a sense of depth and I feel like I'm about to go down these stairs right here. This drawing is called Marriott Marquis Number 4. It's a drawing of a series of escalators from the hotel in Midtown. There are 10 layers of gesso on the paper, which is why I call it a painterly drawing. And so even though I've only used charcoal, I've added so many different rich marks and textures, compressed charcoal, vine charcoal, and paint. It's the beginning of a series. This is the first of the series, and then I've also worked in other places in Midtown Manhattan that have reflections in elevators and escalators, and I have switched to interiors. That's what this series of works are, as opposed to um, an earlier time when I was painting primarily facades of escalators uh, and buildings on the outside. Looks like lighting fixtures at the bottom, uh, projecting light upwards. Very striking piece. This is called Plaza Four. And in this case, it's a vertical drawing. There was actually, in addition to the two escalator stairwells, there's actually a cascading waterfall on the left. And um, so I was interested in how water and steel and the movement of the escalator all had this kind of liquid effect. So Nadine, you and I have talked a lot about reflections. And um, you have that beautiful drawing at home that's based on water reflections. And so, in a way, this is liquid reflection too, because it's taking something solid, like, like architecture and stairways, and discovering the liquid qualities of them because of the way the reflections are bouncing off of the material, the metal, and the glass. Staircases, that mm -hmm. are they going down? Are they going up? Which yes. way are they going? Oh, you got it. That's which, great. Which way is everything going? Because you think that you know which way it's going to be. If you're going up this staircase here, mm -hmm. you think you're going up, but you may be going down because everything around you feels like it's going down. It's being pulled down. Yes. And then and it the goes energy, under here. Yes, and it goes under there. And there's somewhere else that it's going. So you don't know. You don't know where you're going to end up. <laughs> I'm so glad to have been able to come to see your work, to see the show, and I hope a lot of people enjoy looking at it as half as much, at least half as much as I do. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Take care.